So as you guys know, summer can be kind of slow in terms of new releases, which makes it a really good time to go back and check out games you might have missed the first time around. And for me, one of those games was Rusty's Real Deal Baseball on the 3DS eShop, which a Nintendo game I think slipped under a lot of people's radars when it came out earlier this year. Now for those of you who don't know what Rusty's Real Deal Baseball is, it's basically a downloadable collection of simple, straightforward, but really solidly crafted baseball-themed mini-games, which makes a lot of sense when you realize that it's from Nintendo's software development and design department, which is the same guys who made the Brain Age series. The mini-games basically boil baseball down to these various individual training exercises like hitting home runs, fielding, umpiring, etc. Now the first thing that's interesting about Real Deal Baseball is that it's technically Nintendo's first free-to-play game. It starts you out with a couple of limited demos for a few of the different mini-games, but the full version of each one runs you about four bucks each. Now here's the catch. The game allows you to negotiate with Rusty on the prices, so if four dollars per mini-game sounds a little too steep, which it is, you can talk him down on the price using a mix of bribes, good advice, and careful word choices. The lowest possible prices are all predetermined, obviously, but it's still a really fun system. I think the lowest price I ever got on a game was a dollar, which is really, really satisfying once you've fought for that price. As cool as the haggling is though, that's not even the most interesting part of the game to me. See, even though it's technically a minigame collection, Real Deal Baseball is absolutely a story-driven game. Right off the bat, Rusty starts telling you about his failing business, struggles with raising his kids, and a collapsing marriage with a wife who walked out on him. He'll also bring all these things up during your negotiations on game prices, putting you in the uncomfortable position of driving a hard bargain with a man who's just trying to provide for his family. It's usually played for laughs, but it's oddly dark, especially for Nintendo, and it's one of the things that stands out most about this game to me. Now, did Rusty's sob story ever dissuade me from trying to get the lowest possible price? No, but the fact that Nintendo made me feel actual pangs of guilt while bartering with a virtual dog is kind of worth mentioning on its own. I think the actual most noteworthy thing about Rusty's Real Deal Baseball is how it got me interested in and paying for a game that I normally wouldn't have cared about at all. As a standard retail product sitting on a store shelf, a bunch of fun but pretty rote baseball minigames for 20 bucks isn't super compelling. But it's how they've packaged it, sold it piecemeal, and made buying the games half the fun that makes this thing so interesting to me. I found myself making purchases not because I wanted the next minigames, but because I wanted to see what happens next with Rusty's family, and now that I've finished the main story, I'm gonna buy the remaining few minigames just to get to the epilogue. They tricked me into buying games that I wouldn't have bought otherwise by wrapping story morsels around each one. It's a totally weird, out of left field idea, but it also worked. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball is cool because it reminds me of what I like so much about Nintendo, which is that they're always coming up with these weird, semi-subversive takes on things that everyone else takes for granted. Look at their interpretations of online communities via things like Miiverse, or their interpretation of sending messages via Swap Note, rest in peace. I mean, it doesn't always work, but it's always interesting, and that's kind of why I love Nintendo. Anyways, that's what I think, but I want to hear what you guys think about Real Deal Baseball, and about Nintendo in general, I guess. Uh, I'll see you down in the comments below where I'll be talking about all this stuff with you guys, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. And there were two main things about One Piece Unlimited World that really stood out to me. One is that it looks kind of amazing. Like, for a 3DS game, actually, I don't even need to qualify it. It's just a good looking video game period. It's got this incredible sort of cell shaded style with thick line art, runs at a fantastic frame rate, has a full open world with an incredible draw distance, just like kind of gorgeous in a way that I don't think. <laughs>